watch Captain Cameron the road. It's Saturday, August 18th. Well, you know, life's closer circumstances. Do you know where your hoax ebook is? Well, that will never change. 11th on the romance chart. Well, I guess I could have taken the chance if. 30th in all of Iowa. But every time I do, they end up a big mistake. That's where the diamond is. With only a few days until Dragon Con, when we take this fat beast on home. Uh, my name is Justin Robert Young. This is Jury Saturday. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're going to be talking about a bunch of stuff. Uh, last couple days, last two weeks, rather, uh, when we've done this live stream, has been all Diamond Club talk. Just nonstop Diamond Club talk, because that's been the biggest thing that has happened in, in this collective in a long time, if ever. I don't know if there's anything that's been bigger that's happened in the in the Brian Justin collaborative effort space. Uh, I think it's probably the biggest thing. So obviously we talked about it a lot. Also, Brian, I was on the phone with Brian. We called him in on Skype and last week he was actually just wandering around in my kitchen. Um, but uh yeah, now we were in the we're, we're in the position where like you know we're we're looking toward the big celebration obviously in Atlanta on Labor Day. Uh, everybody should come because it's going to be a fun time. Um, we're we're going to make it the best thing that we can. We got a lot of special guests that we're trying to line up. Um, we're trying to do a few really cool surprises, uh, but we're going to spend we're going to spend a good chunk of change on this uh, party on on Saturday, and it's it's going to be pretty fun. We, we're we're going to. Hopefully get all the details on that this week, and then um, just keep keep it, keep your keep your radio tuned for when it will be and where it will be. Well, I'll tell you when. It'll be Saturday night, unless something cray cray happens. It's gonna be Saturday night. Where it's going to be, I won't tell. And um, I don't know whether we're doing like. How are you going to get in? I think it's just going to be anybody can show up. But it's a little bigger. It's it's become a bigger thing than I think we initially thought. It's now going to be like a legit event. Sounds legit. So we will go ahead and, and uh, you know, I'll update you on that kind of stuff. Um, if you did not hear, for some reason, if you were listening to me now and you do not follow me on Twitter, which if you're not following me on Twitter, then I don't know how you knew that I was going to be here, unless maybe you got like a Justin TV. Be little. Um, I was on or did a interview for NPR's on the media. That was on Wednesday. I did the interview. It will air on NPR's on the media. Not this episode, not next episode, but the episode after that. I was interviewed by Brooke. It's Brooke and George, I believe, who are the hosts. And there's going to be a Brooke-only episode coming up in three weeks. We will be part of that Brooke-only episode. Um, so there we go. That's... Uh, that's probably the the, the coolest. Um, yeah, Brooke Gladstone is uh, is is the one who I did the interview with, and she was very very nice and very very polite. Um. So yeah, we'll figure that out. We will figure all that out. It'll be very very fun. I don't know. To be honest, listen. Normally, I have at least the beginnings of an attack strategy for these things. I like to have things I want to talk about. The last two weeks have been very, very easy because there's only been one thing that we um, that we do talk about, which was the Diamond Club. Now we're kind of in a, an awkward transition. Um, although, to, to be honest, I'm very, very curious. I think more so than than the big success with the Diamond Club because it's like it's hard to judge big successes because oftentimes I think people assign reason to things that may not be there because we always want to rationalize what a big success is because we want to replicate it. That's the nature of life. We see something succeed. We want to do that. That is evolution. That is why humans live like they do and, you know, other forms of life do not. So 
more so than what happened when we had the big boom for Diamond Club. I'm very curious to see what happens in three months. Do we make $5 off it a day? Do we make nothing off it a day? What do we make off it? What, in perpetuity, what happens with that? It's very curious to me, because that's money, you know? Like, that's, that's a thing. That's a revenue stream, as tiny as it might be. And maybe it's not tiny. Maybe it is. Maybe it's $25 a day. $25 a day, every day, going forward, is, you know, that's money. What do we do with that? I don't think I've been, uh, I don't think I've been shy in saying that, that the money, I, I get very, very anxious about the money. But uh, we'll figure it out. We'll do right by it. Right now, we just got to focus on Dragon Con. We got to focus on NSFW. Dragon Con, Con of a Dragon, three equals, equals, equals D. That's the big show. That's what's going on. That's going to be in Atlanta. Um, you know, I'll tell you what. It's going to be so good. I wish I could just tell you guys all the ideas we have, uh, but then they wouldn't be surprises. They would not be really, really, really fun, awesome surprises. All right, do you want to know what? The one thing that we have not done on the last couple episodes that I've been promising, and, and it's been a shame because there's been a lot of stuff happening, is politics. So let's go ahead and uh, let's, let's do a little political talk. Politics, 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 politics. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mel. All right, I'm going to tell you right now I'm going to tell you right now why what Joe Biden did this week is not as bad as it could have been and really might not have been that bad at all. Now, you guys know I've been very, very, uh, I, I'm, I'm in many ways obsessed with Joe Biden because I think he is a very unique representation of what I think most politicians are. I think most politicians are good-hearted, um, if not particularly intelligent, ambitious human beings. Um, you know, and, and I think Joe Biden is a nice guy. Uh, everybody I know that's talked to him has been very impressed with how much of a nice guy he is. But I also think he thinks he's way smarter than he really is. He's not particularly smart. He's not a smart guy. And that's when I got I got all sorts of shit from my liberal friends when um, when Sarah Palin was named and everybody kind of realized the kind of person that uh, that Sarah Palin was and, and how kind of unprepared for the big stage she was. Uh, I said, listen, Joe Biden and, and Sarah Palin are probably about of, of equal intelligence. Uh, and I believe that. I believe that now. I believed it then. I, I absolutely believe it. Uh, I don't think Sarah Palin's dumb. I think she was very unprepared for, for this, you know, for that state. Because it takes a certain kind of reptile to run for president at that level. It just does. Like, that's what it is. That's what you need to be. And, and by the way, it's not terrible. You kind of need somebody that doesn't have human emotions uh, to be the president. It's a hard job. Everybody in the world you know, is calling you the worst thing on the planet. Always. Like, you see, all right, let me just say this. You see people you know, if you follow new media, if you follow IP television, if you follow people on Justin TV, on these live streams. Let's say, you know, somebody who's a brilliant, brilliant live stream. That like, man, man versus game, right? Man versus game gets fucking live streams and gets new media in a way that a lot of people don't. It's a very special talent in that regard. He's built a fantastic community. He, I guarantee you, like anybody else, will see things 
that are designed to fucking piss him off and troll him, and it will affect his mood. This is a guy who does nothing but interact. He is his career has been built on interaction, on a live thing. And I'll guarantee you that he gets pissed off with stuff. I'll guarantee you. I know for a fact that your favorite web celebrity, name them in the chat room right now, all of them, every single one of them to a name, will read something on the Internet once a week that will fuck with their mood. And that is as low stakes as you can get. As low stakes as you can get. Nobody gives a fuck about these people on the internet that want to fuck with you. Nobody. They're random people. Words are wind in the George R. R. Martin parlance. Okay? Imagine that. Con stop, nonstop, times a million. That's being the president, and that's the least dangerous part of being the president. That doesn't even get into the fact that you're making decisions that will shift the lives of not only everybody that lives in your country, but also everybody that lives in the world. Because... Nobody does anything internationally unless the United States does it first. Or the absence of the United States affects how other people do it. So, you have to be a bit of a psychopath. A bit of a, it's not a psychopath, a sociopath. You have to be just, you got to have a sociopath element to your personality. To, to run for president because you need to be a bit of a sociopath to be president. You need to divorce yourself in a very weird way from the world around you while still remaining likable and personable. Uh, and meanwhile, you don't really you know, get to even share your true feelings. Because everything you do trickles down and you've got to rely on people. People have to rely on you. It's very fucking weird, man. So, when it comes to Joe Biden, what did Joe Biden say? Joe Biden said, which, listen, let's just pause to recognize exactly what happened. Joe Biden fucking up and saying weird things is not new. That's kind of his move. He, that's, he called, uh, and, 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 and let's even get context on the racial element of the comment that he had this week, which has been amazing to see people dance around. Amazing to see people dance around the fact that they gonna put y'all back in chains uh, was a, a racially infused statement. Race factored into it. Let's remember, let's flash back, if you will, to the primary in the 2008 election when he was running for president against Barack Obama and said that Barack Obama was nice and clean. Nice, clean young man. That's the kind of black person that would win, uh, you know, that would win. So he's got a history of not only gaffes, which, he, which he's fucking really good at, right? Not only just gaffes, but also has treaded thinks he fucking gets the race thing in a way that maybe he is overestimating. I think, cause that's, I think that's what it is. I think he's trying to explain the fact that their race is a factor in America, which is true. Absolutely true. 110% true. Sometimes you can't say that in a way that's not going to offend people. Joe Biden is not one of those people who can explain race and how race factors into things. I don't think so. Uh, Johnny Thunder says the media made up the race thing on Biden's comment. Well, let's go ahead and go through that. Joe Biden is in a church. Now, here is what, if you're a writer you can write about where Joe Biden was speaking. Joe Biden was in a church. Joe Biden was in a black church. Joe Biden was in a church frequented by African Americans. Joe Biden was, I don't know, well, let's make one up, at a place with a roof and doors. Um, 
what I found most fascinating, uh, Roku Sanu says, they can say black church? You can. You can say that. You can say an African-American church. Because those exist. There are churches, I mean, that, that are frequented by certain kind of people. And that's just what, I mean, like, go to fucking churches. Go to a church in fucking Miami and tell me you're not going to, uh, you know, a Cuban church or a, you know, a Puerto Rican church, certain places in New York City, a Mexican church in L.A. Can you say N-word church? No. That one is right out. Right out. Um, okay. So what does he say? So we have, you can, you can say there are black people in the audience and it sounds, and here, uh, this will be a me, how I heard it. Okay. It sounded not unlike the call and response kind of cadence that is very predominant in Southern churches and black churches. Now, and, and, and just for context, because he's been said a lot, I don't mean to, to tie these two together because I don't think they're tied together. But if you listen to uh, the Reverend uh, Jeremiah Wright, stuff like that, uh, T.D. Jakes is another one, mega church in Dallas, there's a certain kind of cadence and style to black pastors. There just is. Like, that is, it's, it's a thing. There is an art form to it. That is the art form. It sounded to me like he was trying to echo that, that cadence, that form of speech. Part of that is a kind of call-response lines. Uh, so... When he says, look at you know, my father said, look at, what they, what, look at what's in their budget. He says that in the first days of his administration, they're going to unchain Wall Street. Which, by the way, my other favorite part of the story is his big arm movement on unchained. Go back and look at it right now. Go, somebody put the thing in the in the thing in the chat, and just go back and look at it, and just see the big unchained. <laughs> somebody screenshot that for me, or give me a uh, give me a gif. I want a gif of Joe Biden uh, unchained. Um, God, he's such. Sometimes he's just such a lovable mook. Um. Then he has the money line. They ain't going to put y'all back in chains. Two things make this, uh, to me, a racial issue. They go and y'all. They go and y'all. Joe Biden doesn't normally drop the last letters of words. It's not how he normally speaks. This isn't like, because there's certain other politicians, that that's kind of the thing. They're going to talk like a little bit, you know, like their constituency. Um, and I'm, I'm referring mostly to Southern politicians. Um, you know, he was affecting a voice. They're going to put y'all back in chains. I promised at the beginning of this that I would tell you why, as bad as this is, <laughs> Spencer guy, is you is or is you ain't my constituency. Oh, brother, where art thou? By the way, underrated movie. Underrated movie. Um, why is this not as bad as it could be? And it is bad. Let me detail how bad. Number one, any time that you spend days where you're not talking about you would your narrative is, is a day you're losing. You are losing if you are not explaining. The fact that headlines were taken away, that oxygen was taken out of the room by the fact that now President Obama has to answer and explain, which, by the way, he never should have done. Do me a favor. Go back. I believe her name was Karen Hughes. It was Karen Hughes... Um, 
the Bush press secretary. Mm, no. Someone look up for me. Um, who was President Bush's first campaign press secretary? If you guys have ever seen... Um, if you ever seen Journeys with George, which is a documentary about covering George W. Bush as he was running for president, um, the, you get a very, very, very good look at a very efficient campaign dealing with message. They bullied and intimidated the press corps. They made sure that the press corps asked the questions that were favorable to their candidate. And when they did not play ball, they came, like, right at him. And this, uh, and who, whose name I, I, is, is escaping me, she would fucking tear down dudes. Like, intimidate them. Like, she was, she was not a gigantic woman, but she would fucking put the fear of God in these people. Now, it is the reporter's job to deal with that and still do a good job. It is their job to manage the message. If you are letting your candidate talk about your fucking vice president's retarded, I'm going to put, your, they're going to put y'all back in Chang's comment, then you are not doing your job, in my opinion. Because it's something that is only going to be fanned by you giving it time and space in the newspaper and on the blogosphere and amongst your other message. Because it's the more interesting message than what you want to actually talk about. You, you're feeding medicine to people. You are setting up your narrative. Um, people are saying Karen Hughes. All right, I think I might have got, might have got Karen, Karen Hughes. Um, I don't think that's happening. I think the fact, I think Obama handled it really bad. But here's why it could have been worse. It could have been worse. Because this week, they were going to lose anyway. When you announce a vice presidential pick, it, you always get a bounce. Always. That's what happens. So the polls you're seeing now, you really shouldn't pay that much attention to them. Pay attention to them in two weeks. See what sticks. But right now, no one, you know, to quote Winston Wolf, let's not start sucking each other's dicks just yet, gentlemen. Um... Johnny Thunders, no, you have seen a bounce from Ryan. You've seen a bounce from Ryan in key states, specifically Florida, Virginia, and Ohio. Um, oh, here we go. Cheeto. God damn it. God damn it, Cheeto. Just the best. Boom. <laughs> Unchained. <laughs> Motherfucking Cheeto. Just the best. Just look at him. Unchained. Uh, yes, Django style. The D is silent. Um, you are going to see a bump no matter what. They were going to lose this week. If you got to bury a Biden gaff, you might as well be doing it this week. What is smart and what if you were a Obama supporter, you would be worried about is the fact that the Republicans played the Biden gaffe as well as they could. Um, specifically in terms of sowing seeds of doubt amongst likely Obama voters. The whole idea, and I don't know whether or not she did this by herself, but what did I say at the beginning of this? That Biden and Sarah Palin are of equal intellectual steps. I think today, this week, we now perceive Biden to perhaps be dumber than he actually is. And I think Sarah Palin did something very, 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 very smart politically this week, and specifically introducing on the biggest stage possible the replace Biden with Hillary meme, which was completely created by the right and got traction 
Why? Because a lot of people who voted for Obama and will vote for Obama again really, 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 really like Hillary Clinton and feel that if she were running, they would win. Do me a favor. Everybody who is a likely Obama voter in the chat room right now, tell me who do you think is more likely to win, Obama, Clinton, or Obama, Biden? Answer right now. And if and, and I'm, I'm curious to see what the results. In fact, someone wants to start a straw poll. Obama and George Michael. They can say hope and faith. Uh, Johnny Thunder says Obama wins either way. Okay, fine. Obviously, you're voting for him, so you believe that. But who is more likely to win? Obama Clinton, Obama Biden. Obama and Stimpy, we're seeing. Uh, Obama and George Michael Bluth. They can go stump at the banana stand. Obama and George Clinton. Obama and Ira Sockman. Pretend I'm not here. Uh, Ira Sockman's actually going to be voting for Gary Johnson. Uh, Johnny Venice says, obviously Hillary. <laughs> Obama and Hillary Clinton. Wow. <laughs> All right, King Cheeto's got a... Uh, because Cheeto's just the fucking best. God damn it. Why Cheeto's... There we go. Um, Rabbit Badger. Uh, Biden is 100 times smarter than Palin. Uh, that is not an unpopular opinion. I would say my opinion is probably more unpopular than yours. I believe that they are probably of roughly equal intelligence. Um, I think the difference between them is that Biden has spent more time in Washington and knows how to play an element of the game that Palin was completely unprepared to play. Um, so, people are pointing out that 100 times zero is still zero, which is a valid argument. Uh, and this week, we saw Biden do two things very stupid. Uh, and we saw Palin do something very smart. I mean, that's just, it's a smart thing to do. I would have a hard time believing that from anybody, I mean, even if you don't, if you just look at this like a game and understand that destabilizing the enemy is a positive thing to do, then introducing the idea that, hey, you know, wouldn't you like Hillary better than Biden? That's a smart thing to do. That's a really smart political thing to do. And all we can say, I mean, you can say that somebody called that in and, you know, all of a sudden her iMessage blows up and it's, uh, you know, or it's a, a Facebook message from who's ever running, you know, one of the packs there on the right. And she says, listen, say this. Call on Greta Van Susteren and say this. Um, maybe. Maybe that happened. But ultimately, she gets credit for it. So it's like, yeah, no, you might be right. Biden might be smarter than Palin. Personally, I don't think that either uh, particularly. Um, I think either geniuses. I think they're both nice people that are think they're smarter than they are. <laughs> I just I think that's the case. Um, McCain also suggested it. Yeah, but he did it the day after. The person who did it earliest was Rudy Giuliani, who just was dropping fucking bombs. <laughs> it was like, question the mental capacity of Joe Biden if, God forbid, somebody something happened to Obama. Giuliani was dropping carpet bombing. Carpet bombing old fucking Joe Biden. So there we go. Now, meanwhile... You know, since the last time I did this, we uh, we had the Paul Ryan thing. Uh, here's my thought on on Paul Ryan. I think with a week to think about it, here's what I think the number one element is. Uh, he's very good at being on the attack, which is kind of what you want a vice president to be. The other side will not have that. Because no one wants to see Biden on the attack. Because Biden will say something retarded. Ryan will be able to get aggressive with the other campaign in a way that Mitt is never really comfortable with. Um, 
So, you know, Mitt, Mitt Romney's like, I think he's good. He he's. Uh, How do I put this? Mitt Romney at his best is saying, everybody calm down. I can work on our problem and fix it. I, I, I believe in his character. That's what he presents best. He is not at his best when it comes to the back and forth. He's not, he's, he's not, he doesn't play angry particularly well, I guess is what I'm saying, um, or disappointed very well. I think uh, Reagan played angry and disappointed very, very well. Clinton played angry and disappointed very, very well. Uh, Bush was better than Romney, not as good as those two. Um, <laughs> Rabbit Badger. Uh, Biden at least has noble motives. Not shooting wolves from helicopters. I don't know. I, I just I, I don't know how much I know about about either of those two people beyond just kind of press reports. Um. <laughs> okay. All right. And listen, we, we can fill the chat with ad hominem attacks, and that's what politics is largely about. We like to see that. We like to see the like this person is not only stupid, they're evil, and they're not only they're so evil. They've, their brains have been burnt out by all the evil, and now they're stupid. Like, that's just what we see. They're selfish. They're awful. They're terrible. They're the worst people ever. In fact, they're worse than the last time we said that the worst people on earth were living. That's what politics, are, in part, is about. And that's fine. That's beautiful. But, like, if you really want to look at what's happening, you have to divorce yourself from that. You have to understand that these are real people doing this and that they're not cartoon characters which is what it what what they work very very hard to portray the other one as all right ryan is a better attack dog he's in fact probably the best attack dog of the four president and vice presidential candidates i would say that the biggest challenge they have going forward this was obviously to solidify the base. You saw a lot of news stories to this week about how independence would not be as important as people uh, people thought. Um, <laughs> you saw, you know, people saying like, "Well, there's really not that many undecided voters this year, so the people who are going to win are going to motivate the base." If that is true, if that is true. I don't know if I'm excited to be an Obama supporter. If that's true. If there's, if it's all about rallying the base, and let me hear from the Obama supporters, are you comforted or less comforted by the idea that this election will not be decided by independence, but by the base. Which means playing to either side. Which means playing to the farther fringes of either side. I believe that if that's the case, that you are going to more likely see big turnout from the right this particular election than you will from the left. Um... So I'd like to hear from you guys. I'd like to hear from the Obama supporters. Are you comforted or troubled by that idea? Because it seems like there are a lot of people that are very, very angry and mobilized and have been angry and mobilized to win elections as recently as two years ago. Nationwide elections recently as two years ago. Uh, also, Ron Paul, or sorry, no, no, uh, Mitt Romney and Paul Ryan is apparently an anagram for my ultimate Ayn Rand porn, which is, 
I thought it was pretty funny. Uh, uh, a Metrizol says, how do you counter Romney getting crushed with women and independence? That's my point. That's my point. My point is that he is not doing particularly well in those two areas, which means that if there are less independents, then that is less of a problem for him. Right? That's, that's my point. My point is that that would be troubling if I were an Obama supporter. Um, and I don't know whether it's true, but that you saw a lot of that this week, and a lot of the polling seems to suggest that there are less independents, which is why Paul Ryan exciting the base and legitimizing Mitt Romney and the Romney-Ryan ticket to an element of the base that was otherwise skeptical of him is a good thing for him. Ayn Rand porn is kind of dry, Tensor Guy says. Um, Rabbit Badger. Oh, man, I'm reading a lot of Rabbit Badger quotes. How will we be able to tell about turnout when Republicans are suppressing voters? Number one, this is the great modern argument in politics. Liberals complain about conservatives suppressing vote. Conservatives complain about liberals manufacturing votes. That goes back and forth. That's what, <laughs> that's, it's the circle of life. That's what happens. That's what happens. Is for everybody who says these conservatives are keeping people out of the poll box and then they're, they're not allowing these people their God-given right to vote. On the other side is... They're raising the dead. They're forcing fucking union workers to vote one way instead of letting them have their free ideals. Uh, that's just that's just what happens. That's that's the thing. That's the back and forth. It'll never change. It is never going to change. There will always be those arguments on either side. <laughs> As public figures, can Brianna Young legally get it on with Romney and Ryan in the next book? Maybe. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's Brianna Young. We just have Brianna Young fuck novels. Uh, oh. Ooh. Andrew had a really good idea. And I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it as soon as I wrap up politics. Um, <laughs> okay, Joe Co. is saying, who am I voting for? Who am I voting for? Um, I will be honest, there's, there's a fairly good chance that, especially if I have to switch my vote, um, to California, I would like to not switch my vote to California. Um, but I probably won't vote. Uh, I, I would kind of like to not vote, to be honest with you. <laughs> Uh, I think it gives me more of a right to complain, as weird as that sounds. Um, and I would rather do that than just, you know, throw it into the, the cacophony. If I can remain a voter in Broward County, which is a pivotal county in Florida, uh, specifically for Obama, because if you are a if you are a if you are the Democratic candidate, you need to win Broward County because Broward County gives you have a chance to win Broward County. Um, Miami's hard, Palm Beach is hard. Broward County is winnable. A lot of very liberal county. A lot of Jews, which traditionally uh, vote Democrat. Um, so I don't know, I don't know. But if I did. If I did vote for one of them, I would probably, you know, I don't know. It, w it would be close, but I, I really, I don't know. The, the, uh, you know, I don't know if I've really gotten into this before, about my own view. Um, but I, I'm not... <sighs> Not a big Obama guy. I don't don't like it. Don't like it. Yeah, Romney didn't like my jam. 
like uh he ain't he ain't like fucking like the dude where I'm like, yeah, that motherfucker. Um I'm not a Ron Paul guy. I'm not a Libertarian Party guy. I don't like I'd rather not vote before I vote for Libertarian Party stuff. Um But I don't know. I I am not a didn't like I didn't like the Obamacare thing. I think, you know, if you look across the the pond in Europe, I think a lot of those uh a lot of those problems that are happening there, they're not just fucking happening out of the blue. You know, I think financial responsibility on some level. Uh Johnny Thunder says all of Obama's shortcomings stem from the Republican Congress voting no on everything. No, I, I don't like the things that he has done. Not the things that he hasn't done. Like I, I don't like the things that, that has gotten through. I'm not a fan of them. Um So, in short, I'm gonna vote for Cheeto. King Cheeto for monarchy, for the American monarchy. Um Metrozole says it's the least active Congress this century. To be honest, that's how I like my Congress. I don't like them doing a whole lot of shit. I like them doing as little as possible. Big fan of that. Big fan of them sitting on their hands. I'm voting Cheeto for sovereign for the boy king of America. <laughs> um, Rabbit Badger, you are liberal and you effing know it. Well, you know, I... I agree. But, I mean, I, I I am certainly pro-choice. Um, I'm a very big freedom of speech guy. Um, you know, but I don't know. I don't think that if you laid out my political views, that you would call me liberal. I don't think so. Um, So I don't know. Murphy Wendy says vote to legalize. I'll tell you what. I do not think that that is out of the question. If this gets, if this gets ugly for Obama, he might play the weed card. He might. Um, so I don't know. I'll tell you this, though. On this show, I will reveal exactly who I vote for and how I vote for them and why I'm voting for them. That I will do. You want to know what? Let's go ahead and make that a tease, ladies and gentlemen. Let's make that one a tease. I will continue to update you guys on where I am. Where I am. I will tease that for for you know the, the weeks the weeks to come. Um so we'll see. We'll see. All right, that about wraps it up. Oh, okay. Let me tell you about this idea that Andrew had. He said, what if everybody who wrote a chapter to the Diamond Club went back and wrote their chapter with yet another literary trend, the edition of zombies? All right? So in the, in the, in the tradition of pride and prejudice and zombies... We write the Diamond Club with zombies. Um, P. Del Henty already had zombies in his chapter. So basically we pitch it as, listen, um, that's, uh, <laughs> you know, normally, hey, listen, why are we going to wait 100 years um, for this thing to go into public domain and let some other fucking mook make all the money on this Let's do it our own goddamn self right now of four weeks after it was originally released. <laughs> um, so there we go. That was the idea. Um, and so uh, we'll see. I haven't even ran this by Brian yet, but I thought it was a brilliant idea. And I would love to rewrite my chapter with a fucking zombie in it. Uh, I like to think, like, everybody she fucks is still probably a, a human, but she's just, like, she's just living in a zombie apocalypse. Um, <laughs> the Diamond Club, a zombie tale. Uh, all right. So there we go. 
Uh, the next Hunger Games, says Merkin McGee. <laughs> All right, folks. Uh, that wraps it up for Jerry Saturday. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. I uh, very, very much appreciate you guys coming out. And, uh, and and we had a good crowd today, 91 people. We were hovering just under 100. So so thanks to everybody who's uh, chilling out and, and you know spending a Saturday afternoon with me. Follow me on Twitter, Justin R. Young, uh, NSFW on Tuesday. I'll be live from Portland. And also, I believe we are going to have hashtag Team Rosanna will be delighted because the queen of the web herself, Rosanna Paisano of uh, Nerdy Nummies, the excellent YouTube baking show, is uh, going to be on on Tuesday. So check that out. Uh, yeah, the Dream of the 90s will be alive in Portland, which is where I'm going to be uh, on Tuesday because i got to run a go game for Nike on Wednesday. I don't know if I should say that. I think I can say that. I think it's legit. Uh, the Rosanna, the freaky little mama? Maybe. Maybe. We'll find out. We'll find out. And remember, as we get closer, we have 12 weeks to the election. In the next 12 weeks... I will reveal, maybe I'll reveal one element of why I'm voting, what's important to me voting-wise for every week. And, and, and right on, right the election day, I will vote. Maybe I'll record myself voting just to prove it. Um, all right, gang. Cheers. Love you guys. Jerry Saturday. It is over. And please, my friends, remember... Before the next time that we meet, please don't die.